Welcome, everybody, to the Roar Podcast Show. John Smith here and John Rattan, and we're going to uh, go on talking about what's going on over in Adams. We might talk about some moral issues with local government. We also got Adam Stockford coming on the show January 31st. John, let's uh, let's jump on to what happened this week, uh, some of the action that's going on over there in Adams Township, and go ahead. It's okay. on you. Uh, well, probably the, uh, let's, uh, we'll start out with uh, this morning was arraignment for uh, Mark Nichols. Um, he was taken to, uh, in uh, called into arraignment into district court this morning um, at 845. Uh, of course, we got there. It didn't take very long. Uh, the, the charges were read against him, and uh, the asking for a plea, he pled not guilty. Um, so a preliminary hearing was set up for February 13th at one uh, fifteen. Wait, so let's get this straight. And, and this is why, you know, we, we do what we do because we have to let everybody know that these old, older ordinances like the one in Adams Township, because this one's kind of older, I would assume, right? They didn't. Well, you know what? They voted on this one. On They voted on this one, but this is actually written older. Like they, this ordinance was written in like 1985, I, I think. No. Wasn't it? No, no. The one in Scipio was written in 1985, yeah, but, the one that's there. The new one was written in like 06. But they didn't change. No, uh, no, no. In Scipio, they didn't change. They stayed with the 1985, but the one that they were trying to enact then was the 06 one. Oh, the okay. one that they have in Adams Township is the 06 one. Yeah, but what I'm what I'm what I was going to say is they didn't um change the punishment. Like say Scipio, they they went ahead and redid it to where it's a, a civil infraction. Civil infraction, absolutely. Right? So here we got Cuz even their 1985 was a was a misdemeanor. So let me get this straight. We got Mark Nichols that is butting up on properties on Fred Fowler's uh the township supervisor's property. He's they're butt up on each other. Mm-hmm. Fred doesn't like Mark's property, so he used his cl- uh, political clout to go ahead and press, uh, press it and actually press this ordinance, but it ended up actually being a criminal yeah, misdemeanor. It's, yeah, it's not just a, it's not, uh, it, he's not just pressing a ticket on his neighbor. He's pressing actual criminal prosecution. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and, and part of the problem is in Michigan, if you have three misdemeanors on you, you can have a, that's a felony. With a felony, of course, it doesn't matter what that felony's for. You don't get well, to have a gun anymore. I don't. I don't know about. It, it, I've. I mean, you know, I got a checkered pass, and I've seen a lot of people in the past. I've never actually seen anybody that happened to. But nobody wants to walk around with a with something on their record, especially people that are, pride themselves on I, not getting in trouble. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, I had a lot of things said about me when I was running for sheriff. I don't even have a traffic ticket. I'm kind of proud of that fact that I've never even had Man, a traffic ticket. I got lots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But you know, some people like to pride themselves that they've never had a misdemeanor or yeah, anything they, like they don't that. want they don't want that drama in their yeah, life well that not only that you know once you have a misdemeanor uh, let's say you, once you have three of them you know it's habitual at that point in time you can be a felon well, for the next little thing if if you've got you can get uh one misdemeanor drop from your record but if potentially you, it's not guaranteed no it's not a guarantee and it costs a lot of money it's not it's, oh, it's not something that's cheap and it's not something you usually know right away so it takes a lot of time to no, understand yeah, you gotta hire an attorney or, let's face facts the only people that make money in courts lawyers right <laughs> that's, that's it that's, so, those are the only people that win so so this this what should be uh, a civil infraction is actually a misdemeanor so he can do jail time technically 93 al- days although and up to a $500 fine yeah but although you generally speaking this is the bottom of the barrel of misdemeanor it's oh, weird it's, that yes. we got uh, civil infractions that are turned into this like criminal activity like so mark is actually intent is to commit crime at this point right that's and, that's bizarre yeah and it shouldn't be like it's that ju- it's just a style of living yeah and, and now it's turned into this it. or it's it's a it's a i was working too hard to get some other things done and so now it's being held against me for being a industrious person and working hard right let's face facts there's a big difference between somebody that just lets their property go to crap and it looks like just absolute ungodly uh, wreck. Uh, I mean, I've seen junkyards that look that look better than some people's yards. So, so I mean, there are those. I mean, but, but his but, doesn't look like that. But I even, mean, he's got some things. But even your statement, like, why are we defending it? Like, regardless if it looked like junk or not, this is not a criminal def- Ex- uh, a criminal action that we don't need to take public money. To uh, enforce a criminal act on Mark. No, no. In in, in fact, it's usually a coward. And uh, I, I know I'm going to get some bad mail on this, but uh, that's a coward's act. 
it, a coward's act is I don't want to take you to court because then it's just me facing you. So it, it's better for me to go to the township board, get them to put it on all my neighbors and have my neighbors do it for me. Yeah, like get a little rally of like 10 yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, then my name is six used. people. Then it's the state versus or the township versus, right? It's not it's not me. You know, oh well, geez, if I if I had my choice, I wouldn't have done it. You know, it's that mean mean state or that mean mean township. No, no. Let's let's all grow up and start learning how to be neighbors with one another, right? Let's put our big boy pants on or our big girl pants on and, and be adults. Uh, this week he he went to court. Uh, we were over there at his property. I went to his property for the first time the other day, and I didn't know what to expect. I I was expecting the worst, and I was actually kind of surprised. I mean, it wasn't as yeah. bad as I was anticipating it to be. Because that's what I was saying. You know, it's not like some other properties. That sure. I've seen. I mean, don't get me wrong. Mark has some stuff on his property that would be considered trash to most people. I'm not disagreeing with that but, but he also has some things that would be considered treasure yeah to th- a lot of people well hey you, you i started talking to him right i was yeah. like man what about those lawnmowers <laughs> what do you want, you know, what do you want he, for that he has some he has some uh like ingersoll lawnmowers and and uh, grasshoppers land, yeah. and and i you know don't get me wrong some of them might be broken or whatever and he's he's telling me he's working on them with his kids because they ran a, like a landscaping business yeah and so i i was trying to get up on his lawnmowers <laughs> and uh but there's a uh out back he's got four snowmobiles on a trailer that are the weeds are growing thick through uh some some 10 speed bikes that are uh, apparently that in, in my opinion this stuff is scrap and so right but see, but and see here's the beautiful thing about america is you know one man's trash is another man's that's treasure right. yeah, you know, I know that. beauty is in the eye of the beholder and so I've seen lots of things. That's why it's easier for me to go to my brother's house and help him clean his garage because I have no emotional attachment to anything in there. It's way easier, and it's easier on him because I can make decisions that he would set all day going, uh, I don't know. Well, it's the same thing as happens when he comes to my house. When I have to do my garage, I ask him to come over because it's a whole lot easier. He doesn't have any emotional attachment to any of the stuff. He's like, ah, throw that out, and I'll go, eh, yeah, okay, whereas before I wouldn't have done it. So... The, the only section, though, John, that I think that would draw for that the 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 concern of if you had, I mean, if you had a legit legal concern, which yes. there isn't one, no, uh, is there is a shed out back. Uh, it was built. It was made of wood. It was m- made in the fifties or forties or whenever it was built. And the bo- the city or the township already asked him to take it down because it was like a health hazard. Well, the roof was bowing down, so they asked him in June. Under the zoning, asked him if he would take care of the building. So some of that stuff that's back there was stuff that was in the building, which by ordinance you have to have everything on your property must be in a building. Um, well, I don't know if so, you have to have the buildings in a so, building. But. So he did take the building down, and it looked like the building ha- uh, is in like certain sections of pieces, and it looks like there's a pallet back there that's kind of broken apart. But for the most part, what I saw in that debris mix, and it's it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, comparable size, like four or five pallets worth of debris, and it that's what it looks like, debris. It doesn't look like food or like rats. Because everybody like wants to talk about blight ordinances, talk about bringing in rodents. Well, rodents don't like 10 speeds. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> let's be, you know, are we being honest about this? Well, that's the problem. We're not honest. What happens is in these, in these arguments, we get disingenuous. At the last township meeting, I asked, okay, is this, is this ordinance for property value or for safety? And I got unequivocally, it's for safety. The whole board said this. It's for safety. But the first meeting, it was about property value. Well, the, av- that, that same meeting, when it was all about safety, the whole discussion after the meeting was all about property value. Yeah, the two and a half, three hours I stayed after yeah, by myself about, with them. was all was, about property The whole value. argument was nothing but property, property value. value. So my, my, my thing is this. If we're going to be honest with ourselves, okay, we're always talking about science and math and how it's important, and it is, uh, because there's a little thing called statistics, right? Insurance companies use it. Governments use it. A lot of people use statistics. We wouldn't be where we're at in today's modern age without statistics, right? So statistics, usually, if you're going to spend that kind of money and do those kind of things, it's because you have a real need for something. So if we look at the statistics of how many children were injured on nuisance properties in North Adams. Did you just pull the child card? I did. Okay. <laughs> I, that's That also makes me evil because I'm going to say, 
natural selection, right? Yeah. Everybody gets mad at me for uh, that. But if you're not watching your kids, why the hell is your child on my pop- yeah, property trying to steal my tents? Are you teaching in the weeds? your kids? Yeah. I, somebody said something. I, I don't know. If, was I talking to you earlier today? Somebody said, oh. Oh, we've all been kids. We've all done. And I said, no, it was, I know who I was talking to. And I said, no, it wasn't accepted in my house. My dad, if you went somewhere and somebody offered you something, you took it and you said, thank you. You didn't ask, even if they had a pile of candy sitting there, you didn't ask if you could have a piece. You kept your mouth shut. You didn't speak unless you were spoken to. You didn't make a ruckus. You didn't go, can we leave? You didn't fidget. You didn't do any of that stuff. Because if you did, you were going to get your tail warmed. You learned how to be respectful and how to shut up and do what you're supposed to do. So we didn't do that stuff. And to be on somebody else's property and to do something like that, there wasn't anything worse in the world. I was convinced that if I had done that, my dad would have dug a hole and buried me in it. So no, I didn't do that stuff because that was just, there wasn't anything worse. So if somebody's going to be, if some child is going to be on my property, like today, I had some neighbor children that love to knock on my door and run away. And it doesn't matter how many times I tell their parents, look, I, I don't want that happening because if somebody's running from my door and falls off my porch and gets hurt, I'm I'm not going to be somebody's paycheck for the rest of their life, right? Should I check out the wood boards on your porch just in case here? Yeah. I'm going I'm to call down to the township. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see what I'm saying? So, uh, so my thing is, if we're going to do it for safety, then what are the numbers? Who's done Who's done the critical study to find out how many children have been hurt? Maybe the MTA did. No, yeah, but I'll bet you they did, right? Because <laughs> that's what they do, uh, all, all in the name of democracy. I'm, but they have they've they've got nothing. Yeah, there's no. And numbers so there. then when I then when I go, well, then it's for for property value. Okay, show me, chief assessor, where properties have been reduced in value because of the blight. Well, there isn't any because they don't like to drop the property value any because that's really kind of how they. Th- steal from the people well, well the, the assessed value is at the state level so regardless yeah they're only talking about market value and the market value in theory market value is only what someone pays for it that's right it's so in theory <laughs> it blight does bring down market value right like look look at oakland california you know but now they, they clean that up and now it's worth more money but that's I, all hypothetical that's right it's that's completely that's, that, hypothetical that's because that's you cannot prove about. This is what I love when, like, when different uh, political factions get in. They go, "Well, my president uh, averted this from happening." You cannot make a statement that somebody stopped something from happening. Like a hunch. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad I did that because it could have been much worse if or, I hadn't or, done that. Or that's you don't com- know that, John. It's common sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I love that stuff. Okay. <laughs> what about statistics? What about numbers? Can, can what about reality? When we go to court, can I just say, Judge, it's common sense. Yeah. No. See, that doesn't work because even in court, we deal with facts we deal with statistics we deal with reality not hypothetical you can't use hypotheticals but john you're defending the the bottom of the barrel trash people come on yeah i i I am because you don't you know i'm the king of the i'm the king of the dirt bags (laughs) (laughs) so absolutely yes i i do defend those people i defend those that can't defend themselves so uh, apparently adams township is moving forward with actually giving mark um this complaint and and making them go down to court so they're they're actually progressing it forward i know mark is yeah they pushed it forward but the other thing is too when Mark was warned, he went ahead and started a recall petition, which gained a lot of traction. But it seemed like those that are in power after that happened, it was almost like the taking them to court and pushing the thing was kind of a, well, kind of a one-upman thing. Well, if you're going to do that to me, I'm going to do this. Yeah, because the, the, if you want to look at the order timeline. It, it looked like sour grapes. If, yeah, if, if the ti- if you look at the timeline, yeah. that's exactly what Because he, he started to do the recall, and now we got the court date. Especially right? so. when on one of the things that we FOIA'd, right on the very back of it is Fred's notes in which he said he told Mark's wife that they had 60 days and that they would revisit it in December. Well, they didn't he didn't revisit it no, in, we were there. in December because he now there's this misdemeanor charge on him. So he didn't do what he said he was going to do, Fred. And let's face facts, when much is given, much is required and expected. He is the elected official. Nobody made him do that. He did that on his own. Yeah, it's like um, like when a, a so he spo- doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. I don't want to say like a spoiled child, but it's like when someone uh, like because we had a lot of there was a lot of people at that town hall meeting. Yes. So it, I got the sense that Fred was like, oh, "Well, screw him. I'm just going to go after him now because he's getting the support of the people." Yeah. Even at even at that meeting, that first meeting, really, it uh, bothered me a lot 
when you had a board sitting there and in front of their bosses, if effectively in front of their bosses, and they were making decisions like, well, if you're not from here, you can't speak on the ordinance. And uh, what's your address? They were they were violating the OMA um, in in asking people to to qualify where they were from before they could before they could. Uh, talk. One of the trustees said, "Well, nobody else can speak anymore unless they're right, unless they're from the township." Yeah, they 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 didn't follow any Robert's rules of order. No, it, not even it, they didn't even they didn't even follow cordialness or just yeah, it's just, just manners. There was just no manners. I, I got to be honest with our viewers because uh, I I was with Fred Fowler tonight for three hours and we talked out in the cold while he sat on the tractor and I just sat and we sh- shoot the shit for a long time. I did. I did uh, record the first like 15, 20 minutes of it, but my phone died, and I would probably wouldn't be able to get majority of it anyways because I got a Note Five that doesn't have much storage. The battery time on it sucks. I, you know, I was going into these questions, uh, constitutional questions, and and I got the sense at the end of the end of the night. See, I think Fred sometimes at his disposal he uses his hearing as a problem, like he can't hear. Mm-hmm. I, I, he's like selective hearing. I, I get the sense that he's doing that on purpose when he's out in public, and then when we get in private. It's completely different. I I don't think the guy is a bad guy per se. I just think the guy is old and thick headed. Uh, I you know get, kind of like getting set in his way. And, yeah. And I, we talked about. I even said that to him tonight. I was completely honest with him. I was like, we went over. Like I was asking, what's what's so dangerous about Mark's property? What I was like, and I got this on camera. I was like, tell me what is so dangerous about what Mark has on his property because you're using it for health. I said, what's the health hazard? He said, that, well, you know those boards over there, and that's he's talking referencing this. Uh, that shed that they took down or whatever it was. And he said, well, that could have nails in it. And if a kid was walk over here in the snow, they could step on it. And that was the only thing that he had there. So, so if nails in a board was the only threat, is that worth taking taxpaying money, taxpaying dollars to go out and, and, and try to put one of your citizens, one of your bosses in jail for well, in a, a criminal the thing. act? He's charging his boss with a misdemeanor so that a child doesn't commit a felony trespass <laughs> well, i don't know if it would be a felony <laughs> trespass but it'd be a misdemeanor trespass right, right but so you, you know what like, i'm saying yeah it's so, okay, sort of on, strange it's on. it's funny but i had a lot of heart-to-heart moments tonight with fred and i i could sympathize with some of it some of it i can't uh i didn't disagree 100 percent. we came to common ground on a lot of things he he agreed with a lot of things that that we're for like with mm-hmm. taxation and various different things uh but at the very end of the night, when it was dark, I was there from like 3.30 to 6.30 or something like that. It was getting late. His wife was actually in the car in front of us, pulling in and out several times. It was kind of funny, but his, and his wife's awesome. But at the very end of the at the very end of the night, I was like, just keep it real, Fred. I go, I've been real with you since I met you. It's a personal problem between you and Mark. For whatever reason, the communications broke down. You guys are both older. You're both thick-skinned. You guys aren't coming to terms. What is it about? Like, why Why does it matter? And he was like, I just don't like looking at it. So at the very end of the day, it wasn't even about property value. Well, it wasn't even about health. At the end of the day, then. He just what, doesn't like it. Well, then he should buy Mark's property so he can decide. I told what I happens I, to I, it. I told him about the, the like the three or four remedies you could do. Yeah. But the thing is, is he doesn't want to do them. He doesn't want to do them, and he wants to double double dip in the moral cookie jar. Yeah. <laughs> and, and use his political clout to technically to jail his neighbor. Yeah. Now let me let me say something on that in Fred's defense. <laughs> I know some people are going to go, Yeah, what? I'm the one that's defense. usually defending him, yeah. not you. Yeah, but in Fred's defense, that doesn't make him anything other than human. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I express that. Like, we're self-evident yeah. truths. Yeah, it, it, he's hu- he's human. He's he's flesh and blood. That doesn't make him bad. That makes him human. And we've got to understand that too many times we get these conflicts and all of a sudden it's like, well, I got to hate them because they're... No, no, no. I have to understand that it makes them human. That doesn't make them bad people. Like I've always said, there's not a, anybody that's 100% good or anybody that's 100% evil that's walking this earth today. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Well, we talked about, I, you know, I talked to him on that level. I was like, you know, you've been on the board for 14 years, Fred. I go. Sometimes enough is enough. I, I said, you know, can someone that's 30 years younger than you or 40 years younger than you teach you anything new? Mm-hmm. Like, is that possible? Is there such thing as unjust laws? We talked about unjust right. laws. Uh, you know, like I was just, I was just going on and on and he got on the, uh, Bruce Caswell's wife. She was on the board for 40 years or something of that nature. He was saying, yeah. and I was like, Fred, that's probably too long. Yeah. I go, because 
what happens is when you're on these boards for a long time, you get this sense of like a boss hog mentality. You like, but you're doing it on a good term, like in a sense you're out of good intentions. Yeah. You're like trying to do what's best for the community. And it you, breeds contempt. Yeah, that, Familiarity breeds contempt, and power, absolute yeah. power, is it will corrupt. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it, so it, it the corrupts arrogance, over time. Well, and that's the the, arrogance. The, arrogance up. is part of that corruption that happens. Over that period of time. I, mean, I, I know our viewership, I mean, it's going to be a prime example with like Tim Parker. That's a prime example. That's what I hear from everybody is that Tim Parker just breathe like like he just uh, shines this arrogance. And I'm not saying that to be mean about Tim Parker. No. I'm just saying that's what I hear for a lot from our local community people. But that just makes him human. That's right. And that's why being in a position of power for too long in one spot is not good. That doesn't mean that somebody can't handle power and be in power a long time. That's why the military has a two-year rule. When you're somewhere, after two years, you're moving. You don't have a choice. Or centered on good terms. That's right. So the reason why we do that in the military is to keep that contempt because familiarity breeds contempt. And contempt then breeds this, uh, this cavalier attitude towards... Your constituents. What goes along with multiple positions, too, because now you're you're smart because you're on like five boards. Right. You know, you're connected, too. But the other thing is you're always in the military. You're always somewhere else. I mean, it's same rank structure, same same rules, same regulations, same everything, but a completely different physical and geographical location with different people. And that's important because that has a tendency to keep you from that contempt. For, cause, because familiarity breeds contempt, and when you get that contempt, it, it, everything's downhill from there. Listen, let's be honest. Having someone on the on these boards, are like several members, like in Scipio Township, they got two members that are on there 20 years plus. Sure, it happens all over this county. So when you get like multiple boards, you get multiple people on there, uh, you're voting for one person when you're voting on those boards. Right. Like you're not voting for five positions. You're voting for one, you know. Well, in in defense here of those people that have been on those boards a long time, first off, let me say thank you for your service. Um, because, I mean, let's look at the last election. We had 15 positions open and only three races were contested. Only three. We have so much apathy in this in this county where people don't understand what their civil duties are. I mean, I guarantee you probably less than 1% of the people understand what uh, jury nullification is and understand what their job as a jurist is to to actually judge the law itself, not just the facts of the case, but the law itself. That's their job is to judge the law itself. There's no one higher than the jury. And most people don't even understand that. So if we can't even get people to understand that and we can't get people to run for these races and take a position, we can't even get people to show up to meetings. So I understand that some of these people have been on there 40 years because, frankly, no one else stood up for the job. Well, I, you know, I do that landscaping and I landscape for some 80 year old guys. Uh, Well, one's like in his 70s and another one's in his 80s. Uh, I don't got tons of experience with a lot of elderly people, Mm -hmm. uh, but is it is it me or is it a trait that as you get older you're like i've been there done that like i'm not trying to hear any of that garbage uh you you become very thick skinned well as we get older as we get older we we like things we like we love routine especially as we get older we love routine routine becomes everything to us and i don't know if it's because uh, our short memories. <laughs> well, Start well Fred, Fred, Fred tonight said he can remember the Bible. Yeah, it, it, even I'm though sure he, he can. It, even though he's not uh, um, Christian per se, I, he he doesn't he he didn't tell me he defined uh, alignment with any religion, but he said he can remember the Bible and and the Constitution. But he couldn't tell me what form of government we are. He couldn't tell me anything that was in the Constitution. He doesn't understand what civil liberties are. Well, let's let's be real. He probably said. He remembers the Constitution because he remembers some warm and fuzzy feeling of something he heard in grade school, like a lot of people do. You know as well as I do. Or just in the general public of just being out in the world, you know, you hear there here and there, like you watch cops or something. Well, it's just like that state police officer up there in Monroe when we started asking him, you know, what's in the fifth article, what's in the seventh article, how many articles in the Constitution. He didn't know. 
that doesn't make him a bad person. But the problem is, this is kind of what we promote. Um, everybody gets this warm and fuzzy kind of idea of what the Constitution's all about in grade school. Uh, we've taken civics completely out of high school, so nobody really well, understands it completely. Well, hey, my friend Mike, uh, I think it was my friend Mike, I think his daughter is taking civics over in Addison. Oh, wow, that's it was good. The, that was the class, civics. That's very good. Makes me wonder. So now I should go over there and just start yeah, talking to the teacher. Yeah, we should and, see. Well, see, my daughter, took, uh, my daughter took a college prep class in high school, and it was a history college prep class, and there was... Uh, they were studying the Civil War period, and um, she would come home and she go, "Dad, uh, my teacher said this," and I'd look at it and I'd go, "Oh, um, where did he get that information?" Well, it's because the textbook says this. Okay, well, let's look at, <laughs> let's look at other books. Let's look at all the history, what was going on, so that we can see. And she started to realize that a lot of our history books and a lot of our books in high school. Um, aren't all truth. They don't have the whole truth to them. And you know, the most perfect lie is all truth with one thing left out. And this is part of the problem. So I, I worry about the civics that we are teaching uh, because I, I see the political science that we're teaching uh, at the universities. Um, there was a guy on the internet that was uh, set up a booth outside of a, a college campus and uh, they were asking uh, people to sign petitions to end women's suffrage. And, um, they had a whole bunch of people uh, just uh, flocking to the table to sign this petition. And he would ask them, oh, can you tell me why you're signing this petition? And they go, oh, yes, because the rape culture in America and women have suffered so much that uh, we, we, we want to do something to put an end to it. They didn't even understand that suffrage meant the vote. And so one girl that he's talking to, he, he asks her why she was signing it. She was talking about the rape culture in America. And he goes, by the way, what's your major? She said political science. Political science. She was a political science major at a university and was signing a petition to end women's suffrage. This is scary. See, this is where the university, the John Dewey Model Public School Education, and, and this progressive ideology that has taken over our universities and have taught this atheistic model for so long that people, they haven't gotten the whole truth. They have not been able to do critical thinking on, because they don't have the whole truth. And on top of the education platform, the, uh, the church... In general, I and I'm generally speaking here, the church has failed in the morality. They failed in a lot of different areas. Well, yeah, like I mean, like I, I'm just, <laughs> wow. Churches hate a, it when I talk about 501c3 yeah, because well, <laughs> when you're 501c3, a, you're a corporation that operates under the pleasure yeah, of government, not the pleasure of God. There's a lot that they failed in. You're right because yes. we can we can go down a lot of roads with this because they failed in a lot of areas. But the morality, just in general. Had, like, so we lost a lot of principles along the way. Well, a good friend of mine that's a pastor, he said to me one day, he said, you know when the church has failed in a country when they have a social welfare program because one of the things the church was supposed to do is take care of the poor because Christ said they will always be among us. Also, when you see 16-year-old girls, or well, I take that back, 21-year-old girls dressed as 16-year-olds on Disney Channel that are you know, dressed in sexy outfits and that's the mainstream TV oh, Lord, for everybody. Yes. yes. You know, so that, you know that we've, we yes. failed in the morality because I'm guilty of it too. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm watching these shows with my daughter and I'm like, holy cow, like what are we doing here? Yeah. You know, it's temptation all around. Well, it's not just that. I mean, we've, we've sexualized just about everything. Yeah. Damn, a animals. Such, yeah. At such a, at such a young age and see, this is part of the breakdown. This is part of what needs to happen. If you read the, uh, the communist manifesto or any of those different documents, this is one, one of the things is, uh, Paul Harvey had a thing on in the sixties, you know, what I would do if I was the devil. I know some people on, on the internet have heard that, but that's part of it right there. You know, we've got uh, right now in California, it is mandatory for kids in grade school to take um, lifestyle. Uh, what's it called? Lifestyle something anyway, where they learn as grade school kids before they even have a sexual identity that homosexuality is is just a lifestyle choice or just a lifestyle. OK, well, my thing is. I, I really don't have a problem if somebody wants to be heterosexual or homosexual. That's their business. But when you start trying to procreate uh, uh, with my child, you're trying, you're trying to put your norms and mores 
in their head, no, that's my child. My wife and I procreated. We had that child. We want to raise that child in our morals and principles, not yours. So you don't get to push that on them before they even have a sexual identity. Now, if you want to bring that out in college, you want to bring that out as senior in high school, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that because they have already reached their sexual identity at that point in time. But don't go messing with my kid with some sexual identity before they even have one. It's like uh, Sarah and her two mommies book that's being read in, in third grade for kids in grade school. No, absolutely not. But see, this is that progressive ideology. And, and here's what kills me. I listen to these progressives, these liberals all the time go, well, you're not going to shove your Christianity down my throat. Okay, but you got my kids reading Sarah and her two mommies in third grade. Who's pushing what down whose throat at this point in time, right? So, you know, be careful about throwing stones in that glass house. So they're doing exactly to the Christians what they claim the Christians did to them, which, okay, two wrongs make a right now. If you're that much smarter, you're that much more educated, right? So, no, I don't buy it. It is it is a push for an ideology, and that's all that it is. So we jumped down the rabbit hole there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I was with Fred for the three hours, and we, I, you know, I asked him. I told him about democracy, and I, and I was like, is it fair to say that? Because I, you know, usually when you talk to uh, uh, old school people, they're more aligned with the founding fathers. Uh, the, the, at least from my experience of that thought, but now that I talk to these people, they've transformed just like the rest of society. And, because and, of self-evident truth. It's, 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 we can't help it's it natural now. Law. Right? Like, it's natural <laughs> law, right? Nobody born after 1913 has ever lived with true liberty. They don't know what true liberty is. And so you get people that go, yeah, I'm a constitutionalist. Yeah, I believe in the republic. Yeah, I believe in all that stuff. And then the minute they get into positions within the township, they go, well, as long as 51% of the people want it. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, a, that's, a, that's a direct democracy ideology that you're arguing there. But they'll swear up and down that they believe in the Constitution. But see, it's more than just believing in the Constitution. You have to understand it. You have to read it and know its principles. Because principles only work when they're practiced, not when they're preached. And we do too much of preaching the principle and not enough of practicing the principle. Well, it, you, when it took, well, how long have I been hanging out? I've been hanging out with you for almost two years now. And yeah, I guess. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been almost two years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know quite a bit. I don't know nearly as much as you, obviously, but I can point out a lot of the red flags. And I could tell you when something doesn't seem right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at it, but... So okay, it's you gonna, still haven't sat through one of my classes. Well, <laughs> I saw your eye roll. I, the, the thing. OK, so. Well, we I guess we can go on about that. Let's let's finish it. Let's finish up with uh, Mark over in North Adams okay. or in Adams Township. Okay. So. Uh, so, of course, we went to court and uh, pleaded not guilty. And uh, well, not we, Mark. Mark. Did, and, yeah. and but uh, we we packed the district courthouse. There was about 11 of us there. Oh wow, that's that's quite a people. That's quite a few people. Because yeah, even you, the even the judge said, you know, it's pretty packed in here, so uh, we'll deal with this case first. I know a lot of people don't sound like a lot, but that's actually a lot when you because nobody comes to your help when when they're knocking on your door. Nobody's there for you. So when you have like fifteen people to show up at a town hall meeting, you have eleven people to show up at a court. Usually, getting that's pe huge. People getting people to the courthouse is harder than to get people to a town hall meeting. Yeah. So I, I, that's pretty cool that he had 11 people. I didn't know he had 11 people there. Yeah, without free food or free beer, it's hard to get that many people to show up anywhere. <laughs> also, he they're doing the recall over there. So Mark is going literally door to door getting signatures uh, in his community. And a lot of people don't know what a recall is. A lot of people think the recall is is something that you just get the old board out and then somehow we're placing a new board in. And it's not as simple as that. Much more difficult. It's much more in depth than it used to be. Yeah. So more recently, they've I in, in the, call me the conspiracy theory in this, but I think that the uh, the faction based like Republican group, Democrat group, m sort of did this to where they they benefit from it. So when when this board gets recalled, these people, if they don't step away, they're automatically put back on the ballot again. But even if they do step away. 
than the Republican Party because they were Republicans. The Republican Party gets to pick yeah, they nominate. who they're going to run yeah, in those positions. They nominate they the nominate, Republican Party. That's right. So we get one good old boy out to get for another for another good old boy. Now, th- that's not to say that the Republican we, Party is going to We gonna are generalizing that. here. Yeah, we are generalizing. Um uh, cuz I don't want to uh, you know uh, my republican friends please forgive me i'm not i'm not beasting on you um uh, but i i am being real here um one of the other things that i did want to say is um if anybody does want to sign the petition for adams township there will be petitions at veer accounting um right on on uh, broad street there on the uh uh east side of uh the courthouse um, so again, well, I mean, you can get, you can catch everybody on Facebook. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast then you right. can, you can connect them via, uh, communicating. Yeah, on, but I told Mark, I told Mark, I, I would do a, 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 a public service announcement, a PSA for that on here oh, okay. tonight. And that is that any, if anybody does want to sign that petition for recall in Adams township, see, they will be at Veer accounting. Make no mistake. This is a personal problem for whatever reason with Fred and Mark. This is not uh, a criminal problem. This is not, uh, this is not even a civil problem. I mean, although it's turned into but civil. Wait a minute. Let's but, not, let's, let's not simplify it too much because when there's a problem between mom and dad in the house and they're arguing, it's a problem for the kids too, right? So even though this started out as a personal problem between... Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely extended, it's still, right? It's definitely still extended because now what's going on is you've got a supervisor that has hit certain people with certain with a criminal offense, and yet that supervisor has the same blight at his house and has not done anything about it, nor will he do it against himself. So... We've got a situation here. Are we a republic or are we a democracy? This is what we have to decide. So it it goes beyond just their personal sometimes you'll argument. Look, sometimes you'll read on the Hills Hot Debates. And I think when people make these um, silly comments, I almost think they're like uninformed is why don't you just clean up your yard? Yeah, that's is really uninformed because the thing is, Mark has made progress as soon as they gave him that he was doing it. And because he was notified of it in October, so he yeah, was doing some you, of it until you, it got you act cold. Like, you act like there's got to be some sort of permission here or something like no, that. No, I no, I'm not. I'm just saying what to the naysayers that go, well, why don't you just clean up your property? Well, he was. He was cleaning up his property. So that's like somebody saying, well, go clean up your room. And, and uh, you go in there and you get about half picked up. Dad comes in, takes his belt off and whips you. And you go, what's that for, for not having your room cleaned? Well, <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> you just told me to clean it, and I'm in the process. And and we're already talking about an unconstitutional act in sure. the first place. So this isn't like really up for discussion, at least on my end. I'm not going to sit here, and, and, and I know for a fact that it's unconstitutional. Well, it doesn't take much between I don't like what's on your property to I'm going to tell you what color your house has to be. Yeah, or what, what goes in your house. I'll tell you how big of... Of hedge line you got. Well, I'll tell you how big, a, how 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 high your grass can measure. Can't be over two inches. Then I'll tell you what plants you can have in your yard. And then pretty soon I can tell you you what kind of a dog you can have in your yard. Then I can tell you you can't have any dog poop in your yard. Well, and also, then I can tell you at that point in time that you have to buy health insurance or I'm going to... Oh, wait a minute. We do do that, don't we? Well, also, he's in a super rural area. It's not like he's just in, like, uh, like Somerset he's, rural. Yeah. He's, like, literally... Rural. In, <laughs> rural. Like, he's in farmland. Well, he's got a them. horse barn right next to the house. They raise horses. He has a horse barn next to the house. I, I don't... I don't... I guess I... You know, when you... I told Fred tonight that... From the outsider, because I wasn't there for Mark, and I'm not there for Fred. I'm kind of trying to figure out why we're having this problem. I always react to. I always, just take it too deep. Well, I always go to. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to protect the Constitution more than anything, yeah. right? So, but you always have to analyze it to its base uh, before you can do that, it, which is is fine. Well, f- uh, you do. Oh, God. Well, I just, I just don't understand. This guy just doesn't like looking at someone else's property. Right. He just doesn't like looking at it. I used to work a place where I didn't like looking at a guy that worked on the other side from me, but I still did, right? Um, It's not like I could get a law where I could have them removed because I didn't like the way they looked. This is what it comes down to. He told me that there's several complaints 
And I asked him, could he provide those complaints? And he said no, because it's when people are ca- catching up with him at a restaurant or when he's walking around town. I just don't see how that is any viable. I, that's not viable. He, there's, there, there's no written complaints there. So there's no complaints other than him. Well, the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution says I have the right to face my accuser in any criminal action. Well, misdemeanor is a criminal action. So at this point in time, Fred should have signed complaints under the threat of perjury, signed complaints to go forward. You know what's what's really bad, actually? Do you, in Although Fred is the culprit here, or Fred is the aggressor in this position, I think I think he's the aggressor here. Sure, because uh, he has the authority and the he power. He has the power, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he's taking advantage, double morally, because... Double morally wrong right. for using that advantage. So, uh, but what's just but human? But what's ju- yeah? But what's just as bad here? Um, and I, I got I I don't know the people very well, but what's just as bad is the rest of that board. Yes, uh, there because none of those board members have gone out to look at Mark's property, and not a one of them want to be an individual, mm. even though they ran as an individual to get elected. Not a one of them want to be an individual. Well. well or a politician. So, like, I always, like, even Fred tonight, the same thing that Judy Leedy said to me one time, and that is, oh, I don't think of myself as a politician. Yeah, I'm not, you are. If you're running I'm, for a board, I'm you not are. a politician, John, is yeah. what they're saying to me. Yeah, you are. And you're I'm like, board. I'm like, you're lucky I didn't get that on camera, because <laughs> do you know how silly you sound when yeah. you say that? So Please vote for me. I'm not a politician. Yeah, please vote for me, because <laughs> I'm not going to be a politician for some reason. I, I don't get it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. That's because politicians has gotten a dirty name, and so everybody wants to be suave and play it that they're not the politician. Right. Be, be transparent, and it won't be so dirty. Yeah. Really? You know. I mean, so the rest of the board, uh, you know, we've asked them if you've gone out and looked or what's dangerous on the property, and they've never even gone and looked at it. So they are, they are um, part of the problem. Not only are they probably problem, but they're they're like uh, they just they're going along to get along with well, with, with what Fred wants to do. Like he's the chief, and they're the the Indians following behind him. Okay, that's well, that's another thing. Let's look at the governmental structure of it. Complacency is that is, is uh, that uh, yeah, uh, um, not complacency, but uh, complicit, uh, com- complacent, complacent. Yeah, complacent. That's the word. Complacency. So they're, they're I can't believe it because you got to figure. You caught me off guard there. Okay, <laughs> so you got to figure that Fred is attacking criminally someone in their community. Yeah, wouldn't you a think? Neighbor. Wouldn't you think that they would go, "Well, Fred, let's go take a look at this." Yeah, you're getting a little serious here. Let's let's like, let's th- make sure we're. It's all not like this happens every day. I mean, although it happens every day in the U.S., it doesn't happen every day in Adams. Mm-mm. So, like, you know, we're. We're charging someone criminally. We're stealing from everybody to enforce it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you would think that four other members would go down there to figure out what the heck's the problem. Well, my, my, I have a problem when you got five members on a board and everything's done unanimously. All the time. All the time. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's groupthink. There's something wrong with that. If you want to run as an individual to be on a board, then you need to think like an individual. Right. I'm trying to figure out. But you can't even I mean, when you talk to that board, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the Fred. What do you want? What should we say? Yeah. Fred, What do you want me to say? Yeah. Like they're caught in deer in headlights when you ask them a question. Fred, What 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 should we do, Fred? What should we do? They don't know how to answer. No, because they're they're, scared to answer. Well, it's like, yeah, it's it's like a it's like a it's like a a dyslexic family there. It's like a uh, it's like an abused family. (laughs) <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, they literally were running like that. Like Michelle will almost try to get away. Oh, she Patricia she ran, ran yeah, out of that ran building. out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get me out of here. Yeah, I, so I the, just find it really evil bas- men with the camera. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I you don't you can't film me because I don't want you to film me in, in, a, in a but I want you to hall. vote for me. Yeah. But I want you to vote for me <laughs> and support me. But support Fred, actually. Yeah, Because I'll do whatever Fred wants me to do. Oh, uh, it's so weird. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> why did they even run? You know, well, it's for the status well, of it. Why don't we just have Fred run all those positions? Yeah, it's for the status of it. It's so, uh, I, you know, I, like, again, like you said, Fred is human. I think he's a, a decent a decent guy. He just, I think he's overextended. Like I told him tonight, I told him that I 
felt that government naturally oversteps their boundary. It's like self-evident truth that they do that, and that's always our position to check them. Well, Benjamin Franklin even said that. He said government always has a propensity to go towards tyranny, and that people have a propensity to go towards liberty. It's just it's natural occurrence. And I told him about that, and I said that's what I see in this particular case. I, I mean, I don't know if I really got down to Fred's heart or not. I mean, he's seventy or he's eighty-two years old. He's already set, and he already who he is. I just I don't know. Yeah, if, he's. I'm not eighty-two, so I don't know if I'm going to continue learning as I get to be eighty-two. Well, and let, let let's face it, he's eighty-two. He shouldn't have to learn anything more. He's 82. He wants to kind of relax and Yeah, why not use that joy? And use I mean, where what happened to using that wisdom, you know? Like this is such a poor judgment call. It it really it really is. Um it really is. And like I say, I don't have anything personal. It's it's in, against Fred. And his wife was so wonderful. I mean, his wife gave me a hug. I mean, she she was such a wonderful woman and when I talked to her by herself, she didn't like anything all the de- all the decisions he was making. She didn't like, but I know at the end of the day, Mark's her neighbor too. That's right. Well, well, not only that, and she's a religious woman, of course, so she wants to be neighborly too. And I'm not saying Fred wasn't neighborly. I I really don't know what happened between the two, but this some you know, she she thinks her husband's in the wrong, but she can't. She has to defend him too, right? Yeah, you know, because it's her husband. See, I don't understand that because when I'm in the wrong, my wife doesn't have any bones about well, telling me. <laughs> this, well, yeah, it's because she's German. Let's yes. be <laughs> Sorry, I'm, honey. I'm using I'm using your line. So, like, uh, but no, I mean, she she's she's submissive, and so and Fred, it, I, oh, she's I, from that era too. That's right. Uh, it, it's a completely different era. But then. I could see the sadness on her face. Sure, you know that she knows that her husband's in the wrong. But either that, or she just doesn't want she doesn't want this situation to go on between neighbors. And I I, I think that no too. matter who's I, wrong. When I was talking to her, I kind of like was I, I don't know I was sort of hinting at that. That way, I wasn't trying to make her feel bad about her husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I yeah because that's not good to do either. Right. Like so, it, I, it, I'm sure she just is upset with what's going on between neighbors and doesn't really want that to go on. In a, in a perfect scenario. The idea is to get two chairs, sit them next to each other, and have them write apology letters to each other. Lock, no, lock the door. <laughs> See, when I was in the military, what we used to do is get in a great big circle, throw two guys in with pugil sticks, and nobody left until there was an agreement. <laughs> and that and that's really what this is. This is this is like a, a headbutt between two neighbors. One's using his political clout to 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 try to criminate the other one. They're like one up in each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and, it, and it sucks that we have to, uh, as citizens, have to try to protect ourselves from that. Yeah, we shouldn't. It's, I mean, his, it's his, at his point, I'm thinking like he's the dad, uh, Fred Fowler's the dad, and he's the one that has to s- realize, I can't be doing this, I have to be the more grown up here. Well, but well, and, and that's true. The problem is, since the progressive period, since 1913, since Woodrow Wilson, what we've done is, We've put the people on the bottom of the pyramid, and we've put the federal government at the top of the pyramid. And this is part of the problem. Yeah, he thought the he thought the federal government was the highest law of the land. Yeah, see, and this is part of the problem, because the other thing is, if Fred thinks that, then he thinks he's above the people that he's supposed to serve as well. That's right. Oh, and yeah, see, I never even thought about the psyche part, of that. Yeah, and that's part of the problem right there. And it, when we start realizing 15 that— 15 years of that? That's right. So Ooh. when we start realizing that we serve the people— then we realize that on the pyramid, we're below the people. Do you, do you know who talks like that? And I'm not trying to, like, uh, who Rom because he's coming on, but Adam talks like that. Yeah. You know, he talks Adam like that. Adam understands that, too. Right? Like, I, I don't, I, yeah, I'm not as seasoned as listening to politicians talk. I don't hear presidents talk like that and stuff like, you know. Well, you probably would prior to 1913, because, see, it was 1913 that we decided that we wanted to uh, dismantle this constitution and the checks and balances we had between the legislative, executive, and judicial. And what we wanted to do is break things apart so we had a separation between politics and the administrative state. So we started creating these professional administrators, these people that were learned people because who was Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson. He was the ex-president of Princeton um, University, okay? So that was that whole idea. So what happened was 
the rhetoric became really big with presidents. And so they're all mad at Donald Trump right now for the rhetoric he does. But it's it's no different. It's rhetoric. That's all that it is, because the president is no longer just the chief executive of the executive branch, which is all he was supposed to be. It's like the Kardashians show. Now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So he's almost like an emperor now because he picks all the head administrators for all those bureaucracies. I mean, Obama was no different. I no, mean, no. He, he did rhetoric as well. Yeah. I mean, he would get up and do the NCAA basketball bracket. You know, I mean, it's it's silly. I mean, Jimmy Fallon show. And yeah, I mean, like yeah. it's like, so it was it, 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 it's like a mixture of, of, of uh, Hollywood mixed in right. with politics mixed in with, you know. <laughs> but that's what it's become. That's what it, that's what it was intended to be. Was that. Uh, oh, John just sneezed for the first time on the show here. <laughs> I felt it coming. I couldn't stop it. Um, but it's it's uh, uh, that um, that that rhetoric became part of what was important in that progressive ideology of direct democracy. Well, popularity. That's right, because the president was supposed to embody the very will of the people, which that wasn't what our founding fathers intended. The president was supposed to be the chief of the executive branch. That was it. He wasn't supposed to be like an emperor. He wasn't supposed to be like that. So what we've got is he's supposed to, and that's where you get these presidents go, well, I've got a mandate to do it. No, just because 51% of the people voted you in or just because you had the most electoral votes is not a mandate for you to do anything. See, that's what the progressives wanted. And this is the same argument that Tim Wahlberg argued back on August 1st with that because I was put there by the people. I have this mandate that I can do whatever I want with 218 votes. It's one of the pinnacle debates is where's the line in the sand? Exactly. It's one of the pinnacle debates that that me and you have or you and I have in regards to taxation to, to all governmental function function all together and mm-hmm. when we don't don't make no mistake when we have adam on the show it ain't going to be any different no you know we're going to have to ask, ask those same questions where's the line in the sand when it comes to taxation or any other gov- government function where's the line in the sand for them because i mean just being real adam understands the constitution but he's also a realist some, in fact, somebody somebody asked me that the other night. They said, um, and I, I well, won't. I don't want you to tell Adam what you said about realists, okay? <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want no, no fighting here. Uh, no, there won't be any fighting. Um, Adam's a good guy. Um, but I, I, won't, I won't embarrass the person by uh, and say who it was that I was speaking to. But uh, last Saturday night. Um, it was probably me. No, it uh. wasn't you. Last Saturday night. <laughs> no, she was much, much better looking than you. Don't lie. Don't um, lie. But Saturday, Saturday night, uh, we sat at a table for, for supper, and somebody asked me, they said, well, you know, uh, we got to talking a little bit of politics. And they said, well, you know, uh, kind of what was my stance on the Constitution? I said, well, I'm a constitutionalist. I, I believe in the Constitution, and I believe the problem is with America is we've gotten too far away from the Constitution. And she asked, she said, well, how do we get back to it? Uh, are, you, are you a proponent for uh, switch everything over to, to the Constitution, back to the Constitution now? And I said, no, that won't work. Um, just like in, uh, during the Revolutionary War, after we won, and we, and we, had, we were getting ready to, uh, to ratify this Constitution, one of the things that Congress put in there was that slavery was supposed to be over by 1808. They saw it as a necessary evil, not a necessary good. And th- before you move forward with that, this is what a lot of people talk about with white uh, fat of the lamb, uh, land uh, politicians like Jefferson or whoever having slaves. On sure. The, and this is this is yeah. where this is. Jefferson get- gets beat up all the time about slaves. Right. This is where this owner. is what they this is the disinfo that's put out in the public year mm-hmm. talking about our forefathers being uh, racist. Right. Because slavery was always a British institution. It was never an American institution. It was a British institution because the British practiced uh, colonialism and so we were colonies and when you and, colonize you have a slave well, we might, economy we might also just go into a whole history lesson but i, I don't think we yeah, need to dive in do, but anyway b- what i was talking about was that same thing in 1808 we were supposed to have it gone because we couldn't switch our economy over if we didn't keep slavery until 1808 france would have overtaken us we just would have become uh, subjects under that king so the same thing happens with the constitution right now since 1913 we have done everything we could to dismantle it all the way up to this point 
well, if we've been this long getting off this path, it's going to take us a little time to get back on that path. We can't just switch over to the Constitution because if we did, everything would fall apart just like if they got rid of slavery the day they signed the Constitution. Well, I, I, I understand your analogy. I don't know if it actually fits. Uh, it, it very well could. I, I you know, we, I'm not. Trust me, I see it does. Oh, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, you're right. But uh, the, the reason why I say it, you know, this is the this is the line that Ron Paul got a lot. You know, he's like, we just marched in, we can march right out. You know, so hey, a lot of people are like, we can't do that. You know, it's, well, and you can't, and, and and it's the same same reason. In economy, you can't turn an economy on or turn it off with a switch. It doesn't work. Our founding fathers understood that. It, 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 just it, bomb them all then. <laughs> I mean, like, no, I mean, just keep it, like, let's be honest. I mean, we marched right in. No, no, I know, but there was a lot of blood shed and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, at least give them the opportunity to, to, to do it. I mean, we don't, how we know if we don't try it? Give who the opportunity? Like, like us, if we we're going to go back to the Constitution and say if we, it was a light switch, right? Like, that's, this is what we're using here, the light switch analogy. Uh-huh. If we had a light switch and we're like, okay, today we're going to do everything constitutional from here on out. Oh, well, yeah, of course markets would collapse uh, and, and various different things. I, you would think, but we're, it's going we're to. speculating and conjecturing here. No, we're not. We're actually taking some things from history to show that they they don't switch over like that. Okay. What would happen okay. is anarchy would happen. Anarchy is the only quick switch over of anything that ever has been in in governments. Anarchy has been the only quick switch over, and the reason why is because it takes a little while. Let's say we close down all the uh, alphabet soup agencies. You know how many people Maybe aren't I, going to have a, have a, have a job, job and yeah. eat? That means the rest of us are going to have to pay even more. Because we can't leave our neighbors starving to death. That's not who we are. That's not what we do. That's what the churches are. But no. the, but but the, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Joking, joking. We're gonna ha- you're not joking. Um, <laughs> oh, joking. But you're not. But we have to get things in place. We have to get things ready for that. It has to be a transition. We. It's not that we shouldn't do it. It's but we need to have a plan and how I, we're going to transition I, and go back. I know to you that. call it the necessary evil. It I, is. I, I'm not, and I don't disagree. I'm just, you know, I, I've never seen it in my lifetime, so I don't know. Right. How and you have to, uh, and, and like I didn't have never, I don't know history well enough, you well, know. Well, th- and that's why I say you have the right to your opinion, even if it is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got jokes tonight. So. Sharp tongue. Well, we're going to wrap this show up. Uh, I don't know if you got any more you want to talk about uh, with Mark. Uh, no, I just, uh, if anybody is interested in signing that recall petition uh, at Veer Accounting, um. Uh, he has the petitions there. You can go in there, and uh, well, we Steve need, will help you. There has to sign. be two hundred and four signatures. Yes, two hundred and four signatures. Now, I I don't know how many Mark ha- has. I, I think he has a few pages uh, filled up. I really don't know how many he has. I'm well at two hundred and four. You still want like three hundred and four. Right, cause some, because several some of them, of them are, are going to be... They have to be registered voters, so if he's got well, like... Uh, not only that, registered voters, it has to be filled out just right. All the all the D, all the the T's have to be crossed and all the I's have to be dotted, okay. or it doesn't count. Yeah, so they they got to give them like, uh, some room for error, yeah. some margin for So you error. always do that. Yeah, so please, if, uh, if anybody supports the Constitution that supports uh, individual rights and uh, property rights... Then you have to get a hold of Mark. That I mean, that lives in Adams Township, and of, of course, if anybody in the community, in other townships in Hillsdale County, or even in Linaway or on the outskirts, please don't hesitate to hit us up. Uh, this is uh, something that John and I are passionate about. We do like helping people with property rights. Well, and we've got other townships that have had. You've had the MTA that uh, wants to bring about democracy that has been pushing these blight nuisance ordinances all across the state of Michigan. And the problem is there's been a lot of townships here in Hillsdale that have had them for, you know, eight, nine, 10 years, and they haven't been used. Now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we're starting to see people have him flexed on them. Well, so how is it that they were in? It, I asked Fred it, about this. I, you know, and I meant to bring it up during the early in the show. Is I asked Fred about assessed values. I go, you didn't uh, uh, lower anybody else's taxes because of Mike's. I I asked him, did you lower anybody else's taxes because of Mark's property? And he said no. And then he made a comment about like 
then yes, he did a little, or it's like he didn't have like a defined answer. He said he was That's because it's about safety. It's not about property well, value. <laughs> well, then he started to proceed to tell me that property value is like um, there's no definite equation to do property value. He, he I, 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 in fact, I don't know if I caught it on film. I hope I did because this was this That's was big. a real this was a real one. Okay, so he was telling me that there's no model. For property value like there's no way to evaluate it there is no like uh ethically way of like the same system that you work with everybody else's property so he was just saying that he pretty much i and i don't remember the words he was using but he was saying that it's junk it's a junk way of doing things he didn't like the way it was being done but that was the way that they do it and he's so he 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 felt that it was like phony yeah it's loose so the state can decide what you'll pay. Well, that's the equity value, right? Yeah. So, so we're talking about like market value even. So, I mean, not market value. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, assessed value. Assessed value, right? Mm-hmm. So like, uh, I, you know, I don't know. It's fun. It's strange. I, I don't know how. I, I, You know what we need? We need an ex or a current assessor to come down here and explain this to us. Well, here's in the a, other in thing a better is term. we say that, but it might, this might be something that's like a eight hour show or eight hour class it might not be well, something that they could do in maybe a, maybe in not hour. well maybe not on the show but explain at least to us better on yeah how, i would love to sit down with an assessor because and find out how that's because it's such it's so it's so um it's arbitrary. so clouded well it's so clouded with mystery you know like we well, don't it's arbitrary we don't understand or people don't understand why they buy a five thousand dollar house it's assessed at 30 grand well, see, it, it, but it's arbitrary, and this is the same reason why I have a problem with lie detector tests, because they're arbitrary. They are not John, objective, they're subjective. I watch Maury every day. Yes, I know you do, and that's part of the problem. We've got to change that. <laughs> but they are subjective, they are not objective. And it's no, no different than a sleep study. A sleep study is subjective, it's not objective. Of course, what we do is we take people with training and knowledge in in, in models that they can model after and look at it. That's but the, that, that no was the word I was looking for. Thing. There's no model for property assessed value. No, there isn't. And so what happens is it becomes subjective and it's subjective on someone's experience and time and stuff like that, which isn't to be discounted. But it could be but biased. The, but it's, it is biased. There is no objectivity to it. It's like going, okay, well, I'm going to write you up for a loud muffler. What if you, okay, don't, what if you don't like well, how, that, dude? What's, what's the decibel I can't be over and what decibel was I? See, well, well, it's just my opinion. I could hear it because I was over there, so it's a loud muffler. And that was my probable cause for pulling you over. Yeah, that, see, it's, <laughs> that's uh, that's not objective. That is absolutely 100% subjective. Just like this ordinance. That's right. And that's laws are supposed to be definite and objective, not ambiguous and subjective. Right. So so as far as what's dangerous on Mark's property that can a kid get hurt on, I'm a, a kid can Everything. Get, everything. A, they can drown in a teaspoon of water, right? Yeah. They can get bit by a snake. Yeah. I mean, like, I, don't, I, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I Lightning can hit them while they're on my property. They can f- fall down and fall out of a window. Yeah. You know, it could be There's anything. so many things that can happen. It's, it, it's, it's infinite and it's countless and it's silly. And that's why we all have insurance. <laughs> God bless everybody and uh, have a wonderful night. Read the Constitution. There you go.